thing about the devil eh, is that he hates you so much. He hates you so much. So much he side. You. And then the Bible says, love your enemies. But Satan is the only enemy God was not referring to. He's the only enemy God was not Because the weapons of your warfare are not carnal. It's, it, it's, not, it's not by taking knife and sword. Spiritual battles, my friend. Spiritual battles. It's, it's, a, it's a spiritual warfare. And you don't fight. You don't fight with mouth. You fight with the word of God. You don't fight with knife. He will break you on your knife. Hello everyone, my name is Precious Peculia and I'm here with a message from the Lord in this my YouTube channel today. And the title of this video today is The Deceit of the Devil. The Deceit of the Devil. This is a timely word and I want you guys to pay attention to it. Don't don't fast forward this. Don't 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 press X on this video. Don't go. Watch till the end from where you are now. Watch till the end. God has something to say to you. God has something to say to you. Don't let the devil deceive you. Don't fast forward this video. Don't go to the end. Don't don't leave this YouTube. Don't leave the channel. Just watch till the end. God has something to say. And I assure that you will be blessed after you watch this. God bless you. The devil hates you so much. The devil hates you so much. He hates you so much. You know the way I say that God loves you with a fiery love that can never be quenched. The same way the devil hates you with a fiery passion that can never be quenched. He hates you so much. Like the way he hates you, he, can, he cannot even reduce. He hates you at the highest level of possible hate. He hates you so much. He hates you so much. And he hates you because you know that he knows that God loves you. And that God gave a, a, a great sacrifice to, to bring you to himself. He hates you. He hates you because he knows that God, God always gives you a chance. A chance and again and again. A second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance. But he had just one chance and he, and he used it and he was kicked, kicked out of heaven and kicked to, kicked to hell as long, as, along with his friends. The devils and demons. Satan hates you. He hates you so much. It might seem that the people that are serving the devil, people that are working for the devil, and the people that are, it's, it, it seems that like they are enjoying life and everything. But they don't know that the Satan also, it seems that the Satan loves them, right? They don't know that Satan hates them so much too. And they are serving it so hard. And he's using their life so hard. And they don't know they are going to hell, like, so hard. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. So I don't know why you are playing with the devil. I don't know why you are, you, you are, you are just, you are just, you are, you are just being lax about it. Don't treat the devil like a nuisance. He's an enemy. What do I mean by, by a nuisance? He's like, oh, so he's just disturbing me. Let me just leave him. He'll soon go away. Maybe when rain is falling and, and, and something, water is falling from the roof and you're just making a sound. Boom, 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 consistent. And it's annoying, but you just leave it. Why? Because you know it will soon stop. The devil will not stop. He will never stop. He won't stop. Unless you keep on resisting him, he won't stop. So don't treat him like a new stand. You stand up and you fight. You attack. You attack. Because he's not playing with you. Like, he's not playing with you. He's not playing with you. So don't treat him like a friend. Don't invite him near you. Don't let him come near your side. And then the Bible says, love your enemies. But Satan is the only enemy God was not referring to. He's the only enemy God was not referring to. You hate the devil and you hate what belongs to him. You hate the devil and you hate sin. You hate it. You hate it. Don't bring his belongings near you. And what do I mean by his belongings? I mean sin. I mean sickness. Don't, don't let it come near you. Don't let what belongs to him and what he owns come near you. Don't let it. Don't allow it. Don't allow it. Don't allow it. He hates you. And he just wants you to hold something that belongs to him so he can come in and fight. So he can come... Because he can come in and attack you because uh, you are holding his sin. Sin belongs to him. Lying belongs to him. Fornication belongs to him. Adultery belongs to him. Stealing belongs to him. Cheating belongs to him. He just wants you to hold what belongs to him. So he has, he has authority to come back and collect it. And it's my sin now. I'm coming to come and collect my lying. So you should be a lying. You are, you are doing what belongs to me. You are holding what belongs to me. I'm coming to come and collect it. I'm coming to your abode. So do away with everything. Don't hold his sin. Don't hold his property. Throw it far away. See if he wants to come and get it, get it from anywhere. Get it far away from you. Throw it far away. Let sin be far away. Some people think that God punishes them for their sins. Uh, the reason they failed their exam is because they didn't read. Uh, or, 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 they, or, or because they are paying for one sin. They are paying because they stole their roommate's food. <laughs> or something. God does not punish. 
It is sin that punishes you. That's why God hates sin so much because He hates what it will do to you. God hates what sin will do to you. That's like he, He's always giving instructions. Leave, leave that sin alone. Don't do this. Don't do that. It's not because He doesn't want you to enjoy life. It's not because He does not want you to. It's not because God does not want you. It's not because God hates you. It's not because God wants you. Wants you. Wants you not to be happy. It's not because He does not care about you. He's worried about what sin will do to you, which is to bring you to eternal destruction. Then he said, don't hold anything that belongs to the devil. Throw it far away from you. So he wants to come and collect the thing. He's not coming to collect it. He's not coming to come and collect it from your house. He's not coming to come and collect it from your abode. Throw it away. Let it be far away from you. Let it be far away from you. Throw it away. Throw it away. Away. Outside. Far away. Don't let it be caught near you. No, you're not in your vicinity. Not in your household. Not in your loved ones. Not in your family area. Not even in your friends. Not in your neighborhood, not in your school. Throw it away. Throw it away. Remember the story of Achan and Joshua, and when 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 they were asking God why they did not lose, when, why they did not win this battle that they thought they were going to win in the first place, because said that they, there's an enemy among you, something that something that does not belong to something that does not belong to the kingdom of God is is around you. And that's why you are losing your battles. And that's why you are failing. And that's why things are not working well. It's because of the sin. The sin belongs to them and you are holding on to the sin. And God has been bringing a lot of things near you. Repent, repent, repent. And then, no, I just want to enjoy my life. You are not enjoying any life. You don't know what you are doing to yourself. You are opening the door for continual oppression by devils. Because before Satan comes, you might send these people now, you send this one, they will come and be oppressing you and tormenting you. Because they are holding their property. Sin is their property. They are holding it. They are holding what belongs to them. And expect them not to come and have a feast. Give no room to the devil. Give no room to the devil. And one of the ways by which you open yourself for attack by the enemy and his cohorts is true sin. It's true sin. It's true sin. That the, 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 you know, there's a level where you are struggling with something and you keep asking God for forgiveness. God forgives you and he wipes away your sins as if you never did it. Quite all right. But when you, with your strong headedness, you hold on to the thing and you want to keep doing it because it's giving you pleasure. You don't know what you are doing to yourself. That pleasure is for a moment. And that moment is a drop of water compared to eternity. Compared to where it is, it is taking you to. Compared to where it is taking you to. Hell. Don't hold what belongs to the devil. Throw away his thing. Don't hold. Don't let it be found near you. Don't let it be found near you. That's one of the ways you, you, open, you open your heart to be used by the devil. Sin, sin, sin. This is a call to repentance. This is a call for all of us to repent and come back to God. This is a call to repentance. This is a call to repentance. This is a call to repentance. Stop holding what belongs to the devil. Throw it far away from you. Stop holding what belongs to the devil. Throw it far away from you. Far away from you. So he has no right to enter. So he has no right to enter. You know when someone, you know when, you when, you know when somebody not asks you for something like this person just took my belongings, you just badge, hey, give me my thing now. Why did you take it? You don't ask me. That kind of stuff. That's like the devil badging into your life. You should keep holding on to sin. If it's a struggle, keep asking God for mercy. Keep asking God for strength to abstain. But don't make it a struggle, a habit. Don't allow the pleasure that the, that, that, that the pleasure from that sin turn that struggle into a habit. Because when you turn into a habit, that's when the spirit of God will leave you. Making you open, making room enough for the devil to come in. And they don't come alone, you know, right? They don't come alone. They come with sickness, they come with pain, suffering, failure, they come with their, their baggage of other things. They even bring other sins into your life. You know some medical conditions that give way for other ones. Like they say, ah, no, if this one is here, the other, one, the other ones will come. This one is here, the other ones will come. You can't have this start having that. 
That kata you have cough. Malaria cause with typhoid. The way it is like that, that's how they will be coming, coming, coming. All that things is never bargain for we come. It can be as this as this as a simple thing of leaving the house, disobedience when, when your parents told you not to leave the house. This to alcoholism because you miss people that will give you alcohol. Can you to prostitution because you, people, you need, meet people that will now want you to be start prostituting. If you, meet, you meet people, you meet other things and other things will start coming in. How things start coming in? The things you never bargain for. The things that you never imagine your life yourself doing in your life, they will start to come in. Why? Because you opened one single window, a small window, a tiny window as small as the lens of this camera right now. You opened it. You opened it. May God grant us grace to obey and heed this call to repent. Because the devil is not joking. We're in the end times. We're in the end times and he wants to pull as many people with him to hell. Because hell is forever. Once it happens, it happens. It's forever. It is forever. And eternity is eternity. What if you die now and your own eternity starts now? Do you know how long that will be? Do you know how long that will be? Say no to the devil. Say no to sin. You resist the devil and he will flee from you. You know when we quote that scripture? I think James 4 verse 8. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. We don't like quoting the beginning of that scripture. The beginning is it's first like this. Submit yourselves unto God. Comma. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Submit yourselves unto God. Comma. That's the first part of that scripture. Submit yourself. So how you really resist the devil is by submitting yourself to God in obedience. Submit yourself to God in obedience. Submit yourself to God in worship. So make yourself to God in service. That's how you resist the devil. Because the weapons of your warfare are not carnal. It's, it, it's, not, it's not by taking knife and sword. Spiritual battles, my friend. Spiritual battles. It's, it's, it's a spiritual warfare. And you don't fight. You don't fight with mouth. You fight with the word of God. You don't fight with knife. It will break you on your knife. You fight with the word of God. You fight by being submitted to God. The way you really resist the devil is not by fighting hard. Oh, no, Kini, Kini. The way you really resist the devil is by submitting yourself to God. The way you really resist the devil is by submitting yourself to God. Don't open windows. Don't open windows to the devil. Don't open windows to the devil. Don't open channels for him to be, for him to oppress you. For him to torment you, don't open channels, don't open windows, don't open the door. Don't open the door. Don't open the door. Don't open the door. I said, don't open the door. Throw away from yourself what belongs to him. So you will not come and bash and say, I want to take my thing. <laughs> he really doesn't want to take his thing, he wants to stay there. So that you can continue having accumulation that is sin, which is sin. Doesn't just want to come and take it and go. He wants to come and he wants to he wants to stay. He wants to dwell there and bring more, so he can have it plenty. So yeah, uh, uh, she she gets my thing plenty. I will stay for a year. Hmm. This is a call to repentance. This is a call to repentance. This is a call to repentance. Another way by which the devil deceives you is by lying to you. It's by lying to you, <laughs> obviously. Lying even has to be one of the synonyms of deception. Dishonesty has to be one of the synonyms of deception. I'll check my dictionary later. He lies to you. How does he do this? He comes as if he's a messenger of truth. He comes and he looks as if he's saying the truth. It is, see how it is. It is, it is the truth covered in a lie. I'm sorry, it is a lie covered in truth. So what you first see on the surface, on the outside, is a truth. But if you look deep, it's a lie. If you look deep, it's a lie. They might come and tell you you are a failure. You can do nothing. Based on your circumstances, it might look as if it's the truth. But if you look deep, it's a lie. If you look deep into the word of God, it's a lie. Because the word of God in Philippians 4, verse 30 says you can do all things through him who gives you the strength. Through God who gives you the strength. 
It is a lie covered in the truth. It's like cake and the icing on top. The cake inside the crust of the cake on the inside. The core of the cake is a lie, but it's covered in the truth. Something that looks sweet, right? If you remember, if you remember the book in the in the book of Genesis when, when the serpents came to deceive Eve. And he was like, Did God really say Kene Kene Kong? He's making you question God. Anything, any voice, any thought that comes to you and is making you question God's ability, just know that it's the devil. And I'm going to do a video soon on how to know if it's God that is speaking to you. Now, in this video of the deceit of the devil, let me quickly highlight how you can know that the devil is speaking to you. He will come and make you question God. He will come and make you question, God, question God's word to you. He will come and make you question God's promise to you. God has promised you something that you come and say, did God really say? You come and ask you, did God really say? Did God really do this? Did God really, are you sure? Did God, did he really, did he really, like, uh, did he really say it? Like, eh, he really said it. Did he really say it? He will come and make you question God. That's number one. Anything that makes you question God's promises. It's an arrow from the devil. Anything that makes you question God's God's promises, God's word to you, it's an arrow from the devil. Anything that contradicts the word of God, that's another point. If it's contradicting the word of God, then it's a lie. Because I tell you, you'll be barren. No, the Bible says that none shall meet, none shall lack a mate. If it comes and tell you that you will not, sorry, if it comes and tell you that you will not get married, none shall lack a mate. If it comes and tell you that you will not, you will not have children, say no, not so. Because my Bible says that we will be fruitful and multiply. Not so. That's how the devil comes. He will come and make you question what God has said to you. He will come and say something that is, that is against the word of God. And number three, he will bring fear. He will bring fear. You know when somebody is trying to scare and they do boo? Like... You, 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 you may not have been scared by the boo that they did, but you know that the person had the intention of scaring you. So if, 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 if the devil is telling you something, and it, you, you know it's something that should make you afraid, but you, you are not afraid because God is on the inside of you, right? But you know that this person, whoever, whoever said this thing, intends to make me afraid. That's the devil. Because he needs fear to walk. He makes, he makes you afraid that, ah, you're going to fail your exam. And if, if by, by virtue of what you even know, say, even if you have not read so much, by virtue of what you know, you're going to pass that exam. But he wants to bring fear. Why? So that he can walk. Because he cannot walk where there's no fear. So he, he opens the ground. Like he, he, he opens the red carpet and rolls it out with fear. He first gives you fear. He first gives you doubt. He first asks you questions that will make you start questioning God. You first tamper with your confidence in God. Because when, that, when, that, when your confidence in God is, is, is out of place, when you don't trust God enough again, when, you, when your heart is not in God, in where God is, then he can come and he can, he can bring his carpet and bring his people and make ground where you are. You come with fear. He needs fear to operate. So we first, we, we first inject fear. We inject it small, small. And he can also use people, mind you. That's why some particular friends around you come and be telling you things that, who says this one? What are you saying? What are you saying to me? You see what I'm going through? I come to my and discourage me on top. That's the devil speaking through them. And it's not for you to hate the person. It's not for you to hate the people around you that, that, that do that sometimes. You avoid them, yes, but don't hate them. Why? Because you're, it's not them. That's what actually the devil used to blind you by making you think that your, your, that your friend is the enemy. No, it's him that is the enemy. But he wants to run away. He does not want you to know that it's him. So why you not engage in spiritual warfare? He does not want you to know that it's him. So you not engage in spiritual warfare. He wants to keep thinking that it's your friend. It's not your friend. It's not a person. We wrestle not against flesh, flesh and blood. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood. We're wrestling against principalities and powers in high places. We're wrestling against the devil. He's the one. He's the one. But he does not want you to see it. So he will blind your eyes. You blind your eyes. You make you think it's your friend. So you start fighting the person. The human being that they just sense the person. It's not, it's not the person. It's the devil. But he doesn't want you to see that. He sugarcoats lies with truth. He put truth on top. 
but it's a lie if you look within and like you don't rush to make decisions because a thought might come to you and say oh my god god has answered my prayer but it might be the devil look within look within look within look within look within check it test it with the word of god this thing that came to me does it is it is it aligning with the word of god will god actually say this is this the kind of thing that god can say and how you know what's the kind of thing that god can say by knowing his word a video on that is coming soon how to know if it was really god that spoke how to know if it was really god that spoke no, but god will not come with fear nothing the devil nothing god gives will come with fear he will not make you afraid god can even give you warning dreams though but you will not be afraid why because he's, he does not give the spirit of fear he said he has not given in second Timothy one verse seven it's not in his nature to give you fear he can't inject you with fear god cannot give you fear it's the devil that brings fear so if you're afraid it's the devil it's the devil even when god is warning you it will still not bring fear everyone is warning it will still not bring fear praise god he sugar quotes truth he sugar quotes lies with truth look within what is inside that thing he's saying look within because some people when they want to give you something when they want to get something from you they only tell you the surface they don't tell you that ah, it also involves you to do this it also involves you to do this that thing now but you signed up for it now read all the agreement or the contract before you say yes because you don't know what is inside you only read two lines and leave it and then you sign ah yes so now how do you fight the devil how do you fight the devil how do you fight the devil i said before when i was quoting that scripture james chapter 4 verse 8 submit on, submit yourself unto god comma resist the devil and he will flee from you so you fight the devil you resist the devil by submitting yourself unto god by submitting yourself unto god by surrendering your life to god because when you are surrendered to god when you give your life to christ you cannot be possessed by demons. You can be oppressed if you are still living in sin. But you cannot be possessed because the Holy Spirit is living on the inside of you. So the first to submit yourself to God. Give your life to Christ. That's the first, that's the first way of resisting the devil. That's how you resist the devil. Submit yourself to God in obedience. And not enough to just give your life to Christ and just sit down there. You give your life to Christ and you continue to learn about God. So you continue to know about God and grow in God. And grow in the knowledge and understanding of who God is. So you can have strategies to fight the devil. So you can do the things that will please God so that God will continue to fight on your behalf. So you can continue to live a life that pleases God. So God will have no trouble. Cast, cast out every devil, 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 I say devil, devil, demon, everything. Out. Submit yourself to God. Submit yourself to God. Like, submit. Like, just lie down. You know when they say submit your assignments? And literally, just like, you drop your book. Just, just, you lay it flat. Just lay yourself flat before God. Just bow down before God. Surrender. Submit to Him. That's how you resist the devil. Then you engage in spiritual warfare. Like I said before, the devil is not a new sense. It's not, you know, it's not, it's not like constant dripping of rain that will soon stop. He's not going to stop. He does not like you, so don't play with him. He's not playing with you. He's not joking with you, so don't joke with him. He's not your friend. He's not here for jokes. He's, I think he's joking. <laughs> he's not joking with you. He's not ha ha ha. He's not joking with you. You need to understand that he's not playing. He's not here for fun. He's here to destroy you. He has just three missions. To steal from you. To kill you and to ultimately destroy you. That's just all he wants. That's just all he wants. He does not want any good thing for you. For, for you. Like I said before. He already hates you the, the highest level to which he can hate you. So he hates what you can never reduce. He hates you with a passion that can never be quenched. He hates you. He hates you. He hates you. He hates you. So stop playing with him spiritual warfare you stand up and you pray you pray stop lying down lazily you pray you pray you speak in tongues because the devil does not understand the language of the spirit 
So you speak in tongues. You you, you scatter the 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 the, 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 the tent, the camp of the enemy. You speak in tongues. You speak in tongues continuously, continuously. You speak in tongues. You speak in tongues. You speak in language of the spirit continuously, constantly, consistently, consistently. And that will also help you in differentiating the voice of God from the voice of the devil. When you speak in tongues, you are communicating with God. Your spirit is communicating with God. So you'll be able to you to be easier for you to know when is God and when is when is God and when is not God. It will be easier for you to know. It will be easier for you to know when you constantly speak in tongues. Submit yourself to God. Speak in tongues. And number three, do away with everything that belongs to Him. When you are holding His team, He has every right and every authority to badge in and come and collect what belongs to Him. And mind you, He doesn't even want to collect it and go. He wants to collect it. He, he wants to come and stay there and dwell there and help you produce more of his sin, which is sin. As you continue producing more sin, he has more right to stay there and torment you and oppress you. He has more rights. So that's what he wants to do. So look at him and just come and, come, come, and, come and collect his sin and go. He's not delivering you from sin now. So why is he collecting it and going? How is he going to just collect it and go and just go like that? He wants to stay there and continue to oppress you. So he can continue to produce more sin. So he has no right to stay there. So do it with everything that belongs to him. Throw it away. Throw his sin away. Don't let the garment of righteousness be found around you. Throw his sin away. Submit yourself to God. Spiritual warfare. Submit yourself to God. Commit yourself to God. You are, you are dead to sin and your life is hid with Christ in God. Continually hide yourself in God. Soak yourself in scriptures. Soak yourself in confess by confessing the word over yourself. Take the word of God like like like, like medication. The way you take it, when they say take three tablets, breakfast, lunch, sorry, morning, afternoon, and night. After your breakfast, lunch, and your dinner. Take the word of God like that. You should take it like medication. Take the word of God. Take the word of God. As you take it as medication, you continue to service every evil in your life, service every death, remove it, continue to cleanse every death, remove every evil from you. Take the word of God, soak yourself inside it, drench yourself inside it. Cover yourself in the word of God, in the blood of Jesus. Cover yourself, soak yourself inside it, drench yourself in the word of God. Take it like tablets, read it over yourself. Meditate on it morning, afternoon, night, morning, afternoon, night, morning, afternoon, night. Soak yourself in God. Resist the devil and you flee from you. But how do you resist the devil? By submitting to God, by surrendering your life to Him, by giving your life to Christ. Then I just want to pray for somebody today. Then I just want to pray for somebody today. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, there might be anybody under the sound of my voice that wants to surrender their life to you, that's tired of the oppression and the possession of the enemy, that wants to break free. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, God, that as they come to you, that you are sent them, that you receive them in the name of Jesus Christ. Just say after me, dear people, Father, Lord God, I acknowledge I'm a sinner. I believe you died for me. And I confess my sins today. I ask for mercy. I ask that you forgive me, Lord God. Cleanse me, for, cleanse me from all the righteousness. Today, Lord God, I decree and I declare that I'm your own, that I'm your son, that I'm washed by your precious blood, and I'm free from the power of sin and hell to serve the living God. As I'm in God, I will not turn my back on God in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for receiving me. Thank you, Father, for receiving them. For in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. If you just said that prayer with me, you are now born again. You are now a child of God. Live your life to please God with the help of the Holy Spirit. Submit yourself to God. That's the first way to resist the devil. Because you are under the shadow of God. When you submit yourself to God, you are, you are, you are hiding behind God. So you have to get through God before it comes to you. You are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. There is God and there is Christ and there is you. So before they get you, they get through God, they get through Christ. Which is impossible. So... Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. God bless you guys. 
I believe that as you have watched this video, you have been blessed, you have been transformed. This is a call to repentance. Repent from your sins. Throw away from yourself everything that belongs to the devil. So he has no right to come and, and dwell in your abode. So he has no right to, to, to still deceive you and say he wants to come and collect it and go. He has no right to deceive you as, as in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father Lord, for answering our prayers. Thank you, Lord, Father Lord, for your understanding you have granted us. And thank you, Father Lord, because you have granted us the grace. The grace to do that which pleases you. To be slaves to you, to, to, to Christ. To be slaves to the cross in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. Thank you, Father, for being with us. Thank you, Father, for the understanding. For in Jesus' precious name, I have prayed. If you've been blessed by this video, please like, share. Don't forget to subscribe. Share to as many people that you know that have been oppressed and tormented by the devil and people that want to be free so many people that, that want jesus christ in their lives please share don't be a hoarder don't be a hoarder god bless you as you, as you share this video and i'll see you in my next video in jesus name amen the call to repentance this is a call to repentance. This is a call to repentance. Rakada da 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 da